Snow Strippers are the new coolest band in the world of dancey pop music you're allowed to like because your mom hasn't heard of them yet. They're a duo comprised of producer Graham Perez, also known as Deliver the Crush, who's been in the game for a while and produced such hits as she put my and vocalist Tatiana Schwaninger, who doesn't appear to have much of a back catalog, but really knows how to deliver a hook and has one hell of a wardrobe. The two met on Tinder about five years ago in everybody's favorite state, and started making music in 2021 after moving to everybody's favorite city. They debuted with the track Keep Holding On, which gracefully blends electropop with these arpeggios that sound like they came straight out of a PS2 racing game. The sound of this track carries over onto their self-titled debut, because it's literally on it. This album is a whopping 20 tracks and nearly an hour long, but I'd say it's worth a listen. They show a lot of potential here, capturing this ecstasy-fueled rave at a witch's house type of vibe, especially on the cold and eerie tragic surprise and the heady slap in the face of Insane Like Me. While it's not the most versatile pop album in recent years, or even of their catalog so far, there's a lot of talent being displayed here. The closing track TV Sex perfectly melds the grooviness with these arcadey bleeps and bloops that make me understand why every single piece I've read or watched about this band compares them to Crystal Castles. I guess y'all were fiending that hard for a replacement, huh? Anyway, the real meat and potatoes of their discography so far are these three April mixtapes. The first of which is only five tracks long and gives you a good feel for the band's hard grooves and soft vocals. This is the first project to be released from the band, and it's amazing how quickly Graham was able to make the transition from Moody Trap to Booty Clap. He cited Lil Wayne and Black Cray as two of his most formative artists, which I guess makes sense considering the band's club-friendly style and witch house-inspired pads. <laughs> Tati grew up with artists like Ayumi Hamakashi and Tatu, and I can definitely hear that energy being channeled in some of these melodies. The group has a strong background in hip-hop, being associated with Surf Gang, a collective and now labeled that's likely one of the reasons you haven't deleted SoundCloud off your phone yet. While snow strippers don't really sound like anyone else currently on the Surf Gang roster, I could see their style holding an impact moving forward, especially after hearing April Mixtape 2. This is a whole-ass feature-length 16-track 40-minute album that leans more into Electro Clash which basically means the songs sound like they're playing on a broken CD player. These tracks are all under three minutes long, besides the last one, which is 301, and are even more raw than the self-titled and the first April mixtape, which both came out earlier in the same year. God damn! There's this sense of controlled chaos, with songs like Already Dead and Bang Bang Mess having these vocal chops seamlessly blend in alongside the rest of the mix, giving off this feeling of being too drunk in a room full of people and loud music. In fact, the vocals are so hard to make out on nearly every song, and pretty much just act as another layer of instrumentation. Hell, the song It's a Dream doesn't even have vocals on it. Until Lil Uzi Vert decided to change that. Yeah, these guys were able to build enough clout to land a feature on Uzi's 2023 Pink Tape i.e. the one with the Chop Suey cover on it. I don't think you Their collab on the song Fire Alarm is nothing short of fire, with the instrumental thriving off of this dizzying justice sample and Tati bringing these distorted vocals to the intro. In this interview with Interview Magazine, they said that Uzi literally just hit them up showing love, and that was enough to land them a collab. He helped on the instrumental for It's a Dream on their third April mixtape, and really completes the song in my opinion. His voice fits perfectly over this staccato bit poppy beat as he talks about badass white girls. It also has a really fun music video that got taken down for some reason. Speaking of music videos, they have a ton of them that really complement their DIY style and bring me the warmth of spending time with friends at a fair or buying beer or riding my bike in an abandoned swimming pool. I'd show more footage from them if I wasn't so scared of the YouTube copyright gods, but eh, what are you gonna do? April Mixtape 3 is my favorite so far, because I've never heard a project this catchy that also consistently makes me think my headphones are breaking. They play around with their sound in interesting ways here, like on Now It's Not The Same, which sounds like the cursed fifth remix on an Imogen Heap single, and Depriving You, having this goofy sample loop that wouldn't sound out of place on a weird hip-hop song. It's less hook-heavy than the self-titled, but thrives on having the hardest f***ing grooves of all time. Their most recent project is an EP called Night Killers Volume 1, and it finds this happy medium of intoxicating rhythms and melodic hooks. They even dabble in trance on songs like Coming Down and Aching Like It's. The latter of which is the opening track, and immediately makes me feel like I popped Molly at a club in Germany. Oh, hey. 
Cautious has some of their craziest use of vocal chops yet, which is saying a lot considering these two projects. And the closing track in other highs, this more mellowed out keyboard driven pop bliss that doesn't really sound like anything else the band's made. This is probably their most consistent set of tracks yet, and it gets me excited for its sequel. It also has Just Your Doll on it, which is a perfect introduction to the band's bedroom dance party style and also has their most viewed music video so far. Can't imagine why. These guys are quickly and steadily building a name for themselves, capturing this newer, more online generation of pop in a way that doesn't sound like a YouTube poop. If I had to invest my music discourse crypto tokens on anyone right now, I'm gonna give them like 20. I'll leave a list of some of my favorite songs and music videos from them in the description, and let me know what you think of them or who else you're listening to right now. As always, if you enjoyed the video, you know the drill. 